Welcome to Titans Football with Brian Callahan, presented by SeatGeek. I'm Mike Keith. A day at Nissan Stadium is so much more than what just happens on the football field. And we want to start off this show by sharing everything with you in this week's Sunday Game Experience. Unusually warm October Sunday is the backdrop for an NFL game that features Colts, Titans, inside Nissan Stadium. Hey, he said it last night, brother. Attack. Attack. They're going to dominate. Dominate every single guy across the team, bro. No matter the team, defense. <laughs> Ain't nothing left to be said. They don't like us, we don't like them. Hey, let's go. Gang on three. One, two, three. Gang. Gang. Ready to get out here? Ball up. Uh, my guys. I got you, guys. What up, Rick? Calvin. Thank you, Calvin. Need me one more. Get out there and do something. Ladies and gentlemen, in recognition of today's crucial catch game, welcome your 12th Titan cancer survivor and wife of Titans running backs coach, Randy Jordan. Please welcome Ramonda Jordan. That was so exciting, so much fun. Now I'm trying to tighten up. Set to kick off. Titans in all blue, Folk approaches, hammers a knuckler downfield, and it is into and through the end zone for a touchback. Last time the Titans played against Joe Flacco, October of 2019, first drive of the game, no score. Flacco throwing for downs on the left side. Touchdown, Indianapolis Colts. Just sit right there, vision, 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 eyes and anticipation. Stonehouse to punt it away. Colts start at their own 36-yard line. Play fake. Flacco fires over the middle. Intercepted. Hooker, 50. Hooker, 40. Hooker, 30. Hooker run out of bounds by Sermon inside the 30. Yes. Titans' first interception of the year. Amani Hooker. And that's a big ass. Just keep this thing moving. They work at the perimeter with those throws. Sooner or later, we're going to get one down those railroad tracks. Levis, play fake, looks right, fades it into the end zone. Westbrook Akine all alone. Touchdown, tight. Oh, oh. yeah. They have just shown jelly roll on the Jumbotron. And so everybody has gone crazy. We are exactly where we were when we started, tied at halftime. Indianapolis Colts 10, Tennessee Titans 10. Got a whole second half here. Here we go. Titans ran it well in the first half, 15 for 75. A good long touchdown drive to begin the third quarter would be beautiful. There you go. Levis, delay handoff, Pollard to the 20, Pollard to the 15, Pollard to the 10, Pollard to the 5, oh, yeah, Pollard to the end zone! Yes. Touchdown, Titans! On third and 19, Tony Pollard gets it all and then some. Colts trailing 17 13. Flacco under pressure, floats it into the end zone for Pittman. He caught that ball. And the Colts have beaten the Titans 20 to 17. Coach Brian Callahan joins me on set now. A lot of good things on Sunday. We saw some of them on and off the field. The end, not what anybody wanted. And you've, you've talked about it in the 48 hours since. The sort of the operational mode of this team now is figuring out just how to finish. Yeah, we have, we've had a lead in games. We've had a lead at halftime. We've had a lead into the fourth quarter. And we've lost, you know, three games in one score fashion. And uh, we have to find a way to finish those games out in the fourth quarter. Uh, again, the other side of that. And it's, it's not too much to overcome. It's, it's, a, it's a play here or a play there in one of our three phases uh, that can allow us to finish a game out and, and finish with more points than the other team. And at that, as of now, we haven't done that. We have to find a way to get that done. Some of the positives, though, coming out of the game, we're going to get them in Callahan on. Let's talk about Tony Pollard first and foremost. 
Guys rushed for 339 yards, keeps making big plays. He can catch, he can pass, protect. You score on third and 19, my goodness, coach. <laughs> Yeah, it wasn't that that uh, that call wasn't necessarily designed to score, um, but that just goes to speak about uh, what Tony's ability with the ball in his hand is. Is he can make something out of nothing, and he can make huge plays uh, when the ball is in his hand in, in 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 the run game or the pass game. And he's shown uh, an ability to really be able to lift us uh, when we've needed it. And, and he's been a really fantastic addition uh, to our offense. Speaking of the offense, one thing that you're working on that seems to be going well early. Red zone offense, eight touchdowns in 13 trips, doing a lot of things well when you get inside the 20. Yeah, that's the name of the game is you have to be able to score when you're down there. Um, you only get so many opportunities uh, over the course of a game, and when you get to, you get two or three, you should need to score on all, all of them. And, and we've done a good job of scoring when we're in the red zone. Now the, the trick is is to get down there another More. two another two or two times, three times a game and, and keep that same consistency and efficiency up in the red zone because uh, the name of the game in this league is red zone touchdowns and, and we found a way to do it down there. Now we got to do it more often. Yeah, a lot of times that's the last thing to come for an offense. If you've got that going as you perk up everything else, that's a good thing for the time. It's a great sign for us that we can execute down there because that is probably the hardest area in the field. Um, to execute because it's shorter. There's do you have a boundary behind it that everything happens faster. The windows are tighter, um, and we found ways to score touchdowns. And so that's a very promising sign for us that you know we're, we're close. We're close to being able to do it. We just need to get down there at least one more trip right now because we're at least losing one score game. So one more trip down to the red zone, I think, would go a long way for us. Last point of Callahan on this defense giving up only 249 yards per game. They've been uh, outstanding and outstanding in every respect against the pass, against the run. Um, they're physical, they're aggressive, they attack, and they make plays. And we need more of that um, over the course of a game. But they've, they've, they've been everything that we've hoped they would be defensively. And again, with all the new additions and new starters, guys really gelling and playing together. A lot of credit to Denard Wilson and the job that he and his staff on defense have done, um, along with the players on the field. It's been a really good mix all the way around. So enough good parts and things happening that if you can just put that finish in there with it, you feel very optimistic about where you're going next. I do. I'm, I'm convicted. I feel great about our ability to, to close the gap and find a way to win these games because um, we're very capable of it. We have a good football team. The wins and losses haven't come our way yet, but um, I have a lot of conviction and belief that, that they're coming. And we just have to find a way to get over that hump and find a way to win those close games. Um, and once you, once you get the first one and you get some of that confidence uh, and you prove you can win a tight game, that goes a long way in being able to do it again and again in the future. Titans tape is up next. We're going to take a look at one of the two Titans touchdowns. Coach will break it down. Stay with us for more Titans football with Brian Callahan, presented by SeatGeek. The Titans got the second half kickoff and put together a 14-play drive that resulted in a spectacular touchdown from Tony Pollard. It came in unusual circumstances, third and 19 from the 23. This is the way you drew it up. Absolutely. We work on this all the time, <laughs> right in this exact spot. Uh, no, it, it, was, it was a play on a third and 19 where we didn't have a chance maybe to – uh, feel like we can it's hard to get routes on third and 19 and into the end zone and to hold up that long it's just difficult so this functioned almost as a as a, a as a screen would so we, we call the draw play here on third and 19 with the intent hopefully that we would be able to get into a manageable fourth down and have a chance to go for it but uh, really really well blocked up front to start we get we get guys covered up all right Tyler's blocking his guy Wiley's on his Lloyd's on his and then really it's up to Tony as he breaks through this second level. You know, that's really his guy. And if that, that's, we don't block him. That's who he's got to go get. Um, and then once he got through this second level, uh, he did the rest. You know, this is, this is what God put Tony on the earth to do is, is run the football. And he gets, gets to the first tackle, and then he's got him squared up in space. It's one-on-one. -on -one, um, and those are matchups that we like with Tony on any safety in the league. And, and he makes a miss and, and finishes it for uh, what was an unexpected touchdown Again, the idea was hopefully to get into a fourth and one or a two at that point uh, so we could maybe go for it, but, but he did the rest all the way through. It was an electric run. Uh, it's, that's a perfect example of, of, a, of a guy, a playmaker making plays. And, and again, get started up front with Pete, get right started here. up front with Lloyd, and you see those guys getting people covered up. And, and as long as we can get guys covered up in the run game, uh, we feel like we have the guys in, in, the, in the 
uh, with the ball in their hand that can go make uh, those extra 10, 15 yards whenever we need it. And uh, really outstanding making guy miss and finishing the run by Tony. And uh, again, I thought this was, I thought this was probably going to uh, potentially win us the game. Now, that was a super play. And I think the thing that jumps out about Tony Pollard is he is so hard to tackle. Yeah. And you don't realize it because he doesn't look like the biggest guy in the world, but he's what, 210 pounds, 5'10", yeah. lower body. I mean, when he gets out and gets it, that thing going, that's not easy, and he can cut. He's got great lateral quickness. Um, I think what separates him from, from a lot of guys is he's got really outstanding vision for the field. So he knows when and where to make the cut and where the ball is going to fit. Uh, and then he has the explosiveness uh, with the ball in his hand to finish for explosive runs. And uh, again, a, thir a third and 19 draw wasn't necessarily how you put it on the chalkboard, but uh, it's just a great example of, of what he means to our offense and how, how well he's playing right now. He can make those kind of plays for us. When he was a Memphis Tiger, he was one of the best kickoff returners in America. And on a play like this, you see why. Speed, quickness, cutting ability, and the power. Tony Pollard with the touchdown making things happen for the Titans. We've got more of Titans football with Brian Callahan presented by SeatGeek coming up. Nashville's own Jelly Roll was in attendance for Sunday's game, but that wasn't the first time the megastar has been around the Tennessee Titans. Brian Callahan invited him right here to Ascension St. Thomas Sports Park during training camp, and it did not disappoint, especially for Devondre Sweat. You'll agree as you watch this Seat Geeks Out. Tondra Sweat, yeah. Gonna be big personality. Yeah, I big love man, him. big personality. Big man, big personality. He, uh, yeah. He's going to lose his mind when you walk in the door. Like, the person who's going to flip out the yeah. most will be him. You think so? Oh, my gosh. He, we had him sitting in that chair, and he goes, I would die if I could meet Jelly Roll. And we were like, well, we could. I mean, that's, we're in the same city. Oh, we crazy. could probably make that happen I'm such, at some I'm such point. a fan of his. He is going to, to flip out. I got somebody here today that might know a thing or two about singing. I'd like you guys to welcome a friend of mine here, uh, Mr. Jelly Roll. <laughs> what you say, you want to hear Save Me? Yes, sir. Come sing it with me then, big dog. <laughs> Baby, don't waste your time on me. I'm so damaged beyond repair. Life is shattered, my hope and my dream. There we go, give it to me. I'm, I'm a love's call. Yeah. I want y'all to think about that too when y'all go on that field Sunday, that y'all's impact is bigger than just on the field. It's happening all around this city. That the vibrations of this are touching people everywhere. That your impact in the city is bigger than just the 65,000 people that come to watch y'all every single week. There are people that are counting on this organization to continue to thrive because it's feeding us. He is no fake fan. He is the real thing from Antioch. Loves this organization, loves this team. He got him going on Sunday. He, sure he, was, he was there and was into it. What was it like for you as a head coach in your first training camp to bring somebody like that in as a big surprise? Uh, the surprise was great, and be able to have someone of, of – of Jelly Roll's caliber, uh, be able to come speak to the team, but also understand what this team mean, means to the city and what it's meant to him over, over his life and uh, how passionate he is about the Titans. It was the perfect combination of, of his star power and his fandom um, for our team to see and feel, and, and he was fantastic. What an uh, unbelievable musician and, and what a great presence he has and, and what an ambassador to, to the, the Titans organization he's been. And, and, as a personal fan, I, I love his music. I love having him. It was a starstruck moment for me, too. So a uh, really incredible moment, I think, all the way around, and loved having him here. We're just so proud of that guy. Congratulations for all the success for Jelly Roll and everything good going on with him right now. We look forward to seeing you back at Nissan Stadium soon. This Sunday, we look forward to seeing Amani Hooker continue to make plays. He had the first interception of the season for the Titans against the Colts on Sunday. We'll talk with Amadi Hooker in this week's Epic Western Genuine article next on Titans Football with Brian Callahan.
26-year-old Damani Hooker is one of the longest tenured Titans players on the roster. With his experience, brings a tremendous leadership opportunity, and number 37 has not shied away. He talks about that and more with Amy Wells in this week's Epic Western Genuine article. So, Imani, you had a lot of change. So now coming into this season, have you done anything differently knowing that you are going to be one of the main leaders, not just in your room, but within the defense and within this team as a whole? You know, for me, that I had to be pushed into a leadership role more than I already was in. So all these things that were challenges last year, I mean, guys learned from it, I learned from, from it. Help us out as a better player, but also just as a better person as far as handling adversity. Can I, you know, help the guy next to me, help these rookies come in? And, you know, it's a new scheme for me as well, but I have to show, you know, I can, you can do this at a high level and still, you know, lead it, whether it's by example or verbally. Be violent. You get the point of attack, just be violent, bro. Get the ball out. Look, special teams, defense, no matter where the f you at, that ball is ours. Bring Back to the bench so we can celebrate. Let's go, gang on three. One, two, three. Gang. Gang. Flacco fires over the middle, intercepted. Hooker, 50, Hooker, 40, Hooker, 30. Hooker run out of bounds by Sermon inside the 30. Yes. Titans' first interception of the year. Amani Hooker picking her off. How do you navigate something like that? Because you're not like the old guy who's right. five or six years older. You're yep. the old guy who's their age. For me, it's just not based off age. It's based off experience. For me, it was just about, you know, just how can I make this game easier? And the faster I learn the game, the faster I'm able to not just help myself, but like I said before, help others around me. Guys who are looking to you for guidance, is it because of your performance on the field or is it because of your familiarity with this place and kind of how it works to be a pro? Or maybe a mix of both? Well, I definitely would probably say a mix of both. Um, I mean, it's hard to lead if you're out there messing up and you know things aren't going your way. People probably aren't going to look towards you. So um, that, that comes down to me being out, going out there and doing my job as well, putting myself in position to be that leader. Brian, Amani Hooker's interception set up the first touchdown in the game. Can he and the entire Titans defense play with that sort of confidence even to a higher level after plays like that? Absolutely, and they've played with a very high level of confidence from the start of the season, uh, as evidenced by how productive they've been uh, as de on defense as a whole and as a pass defense, and, and Hook's a big reason for that. Um, his experience, his leadership are, are all things that uh, mean a lot to our football team, and, and we need – that from him and he's responded in, in, a, in a big way for us and obviously setting up that first interception for us of the season and, and putting us in scoring position uh, was fantastic. I'd, he's everything you want uh, that we want a, a Tennessee Titan to be and be about and that's uh, we have a lot of guys like him on our football team and, and he's a he's a big reason why uh, I think our success is, is coming. Callahan's first look is next as we talk about the Titans trip to Buffalo. Stay with us for more Titans football with Brian Callahan. Callahan's first look at our trip to Buffalo presented by Nissan. Of course, you got the quarterback, Josh Allen. They got the running back who's doing good things, James Cook, Khalil Shakir, Dalton Kincaid, lots of pass catchers. What challenges do this, does this Bills offense present for the Titans defense? Well, it always starts and ends with Josh Allen. I mean, he's one of the premier quarterbacks in the league. He's one of the, the great playmakers that our league has. Uh, super exciting as a, as a player. Uh, not a guy you love to go face. Um, he's very, very talented and presents a ton of problems, and they're playing at a pretty high level. Buffalo has some injury issues on defense, and yet still looking good. Dorian Williams leads Buffalo in tackles. Greg Russo leads him in sacks. How will they test Will Levis and your offense? Always a, a really tough front to play against. The, the, those guys make plays and they continue to plug people in and they just keep playing at a high level. Uh, really well schemed up defense, a really good front, and those guys are, are a big part of that. So uh, we got a work cut out for us uh, on all facets of playing against that defense. And it's, it's one of the best teams in the AFC for a reason. And then we got to go play them at their place. The Titans will be in Buffalo this Sunday to battle the Bills. You can listen to the broadcast on our Titans radio stations. Our coverage begins with Titans countdown at 11 a.m. Central. Kickoff set for 12.02 Central. Titans and the Bills this Sunday on Titans radio.
For Coach Brian Callahan, I'm Mike Keith. Thanks for joining us for Titans football with Brian Callahan, and we'll see you next week.